good morning children so in the last class we were completed until the topic the biological evolution isn't it and also we were discussed about the the mechanism evolution everything in detail so after this one we have to discuss about another important topic that is nothing but hardy weinberg principle okay so the hardy weinberg principle it is also known as genetic equilibrium okay so today let us start the the discussion with respect to one of the important topic the hardy weinberg principle okay see first of all when it comes to the definition it says that the allele frequencies in a population are stable and is constant from generation to generation in the absence of disturbing factor okay so that means the allele frequencies in a population population means you know very well that a group of individuals are stable it remains as it is and is constant there is no changes from generation to generation in the absence of disturbing factor that means if there will be no disturbances if there will be no interference so it will be remains as it is okay so in other words so how can you define the hardy weinberg principle means the gene frequency remains constant from generation to generation unless it is altered by external agencies is called genetic equilibrium okay so this is a definition of the hardy weinberg principle and actually so this law was proposed in 1908 okay please note down all the things cannot be given in the slide only so the hardy weinberg principle it is also known as genetic equilibrium so this law was proposed in 1909 by g h hardy okay or uh, yeah i mean uh, there is another uh, name of the scientist a british mathematician and a german physicist e weinberg are you getting so that means this law was proposed in 1908 by g h hardy a british mathematician and the german physicist e weinberg so the law attempts to establish a connection between the evolution and the gene frequencies since evolution depends on the change in the frequency they put forward the formula p plus q is equal to 1 or 100% okay or 100% to calculate the gene frequency they demonstrated that the gene frequencies do not depend on dominance or recessive but remains constant from generation to generation under certain condition okay so that's what the gene pool the gene pool is nothing but the total genes and their alleles in a population remain constant okay so it is also called genetic equilibrium or popularly called hardy weinberg principle So then you can ask me how many number of the in the genes or the alleles will be the sum total of the all the allelic frequencies which is always equal to one. I will explain how. Okay, I will explain how in the next step while we are discussing about the practical application of the genetic equilibrium. I will tell you. Okay, for example, here only they are given. Consider a population of the twenty beetles. Each beetle is a gene pool. their totality is the gene pool of that a population okay and the allele frequency refers to how frequently a particular allele appears in a population are you getting yeah consider when it comes to the practical application of the genetic equilibrium the formula generally we use is p plus q is equal to 1 okay so which can be apply to any population to find out the gene frequency let us consider the two alleles of capital a and small a at the given locus the possible genotypes in the population will be capital a capital a capital a small a and small a small a let the gene frequencies of the a allele is represented by small p and that of small a allele is represented by small q okay i'm explaining by taking example okay are you able to understand consider in a diploid small p and small q are the frequencies of allele capital a 
and small a respectively. So then the frequencies of capital A capital A is equal to in a deployed condition I am telling about deployed condition is equal to small p square frequency of small a small a will be is equal to small q square then the frequency of capital A small a is equal to 2 small p small q hence p square plus 2 pq plus q square which is always is equal to 1 so this is nothing but binomial expression the binomial expression okay so that means the general relationship between gene and genotype can be given by the algebraic equation or the binomial expression that is nothing but p plus q whole square is equal to p square plus 2 p q plus q square okay so then the change of frequency of allele in a population disturb or remember equilibrium so this change is due to evolution okay this change how it may be happens it is because of the evolution okay so here only they have given the example so let me to tell you capital a capital a you can identify the how they look like isn't it and the, the capital a small a how they look like heterozygous condition homozygous capital a capital a and capital a small a will be heterozygous and small a small way will be considered the recessive yellow beetles okay red and yellow red block dotted beetles and the uh, yellow block dotted beetles okay are you able to understand yeah so consider here the total number of the alleles capital a and small a is equal to 40 four zero and then among these things capital a which is, is equal to 26 and small a is equal to 14 consider okay consider then therefore the frequency of capital a is equal to small p then it will be which is, is equal to 26 by 40 if you multiply okay so then the divided by from this one okay so if you multiply i mean the divided by 26 by 40 you will get 0 0.65 then the frequency of small a is equal to small q which is, is equal to 14 by 40 you will get 0 0.35 so that means the total allelic frequency p plus q is equal to 1 now the number of battles is equal to 20 among these genotypes capital A capital A that is homozygous is equal to 10 capital A small a heterozygous is equal to 6 small a small a that is homozygous recessive is equal to 4 so then the frequency of genotype capital A capital A is equal to 10 by 20 you will get 0 0.5 the frequency of genotype capital A small a is equal to 6 by 20 is equal to 0 0.3 and the frequency of genotype small a small a is equal to 4 by 20 is equal to 0 0.2 okay if you add all these things how much you will get you will get surely one isn't it so that's what i said the p plus q is equal to one okay if you substitute in the formula also the same values in the p plus q all square is equal to p square plus 2 p q plus q square if you substitute the similar values okay so in the place i mean the p square write down that is 0 0.5 whole square plus in the q okay that means in the a uh, capital a small b you can write down 0 0.3 and then small a okay so if you write down q square okay is equal to 0 0.2 so if you stuff substitute all these things how much you will get so after the adding everything you will get the so you just add the 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 only how much you will get you will get one okay so this is what as i said so the above values can be expressed as the percentage in terms of the p and q as so you can write that in completely it will be is equal to 100 percent so that is nothing but p plus q is equal to one are you getting how to calculate yeah because why I am telling everything in detail on the base of this one in examination 
especially in the competitive they will ask to calculate they will give the frequencies okay with respect to the particular species so like for example consider the frequencies of aa so they will mention some other values then you substitute the same thing only or else they will give the only the frequencies so then you should uh, uh, calculate the completely so like that they will give the uh, different type of the formulas okay with respect to the you know, problems so and the, now the question arises the uh, as i said what is the definition as i said the gene frequency remains constant from generation to generation unless it is altered by the external agencies is called genetic equilibrium now the question arises when will be the factors okay or what are the factors which affects the rd winber equilibrium or we can also say the agents of evolutionary changes okay the agents of evolution i mean the agents of evolutionary changes they are also called the factors that affects or influences the rd winber equilibrium okay so there are five important factors known to affect the rd winber equilibrium so they are as follows in that one first one is gene flow it is also known as the gene migration and the genetic drift so next one is a mutation and the fourth one is genetic recombination and the fifth one is a natural selection okay so these are all the five factors which influences or which affects the horty winberg principle or horty winberg equilibrium okay so let us discuss one by one what are those factors okay yeah as i said which is the first factor yes that is a gene migration it is also known as gene flow okay so gene migration it is also known as gene flow so let me explain how this gene flow affects the rd winber principle okay so first of all it is a gene flow from one population to another here gene frequencies change in both the population gene flow occurs if migration happens multiple times okay so here only they have given the example the offspring of the migrated bird as a genotype capital h small h okay so then with respect to the color also it is mentioned so in the beginning the population a the selection pressure against the recessive phenotype has created a homozygous population that is capital h capital h and in a population b selection pressure against the dominant phenotype has created homozygous population that is a recessive small h small h during the cross the offspring migrated bird has a genotype capital h small h and the offspring migrated bird has a genotype of the so that is a capital h small h so then let me explain how this process actually happens as i said the transfer of genes between the population of different gene pool which differs genetically but can interbreed is called gene flow okay first of all note down please note down the definition the transfer of gene between the there is a transfer of the genes between the population of different gene pool which differs genetically but can interbreed it is called gene flow okay are you able to get it then so this results the population of a new combination there is a new combination is capital h small h isn't it so this results the population of the new combination the sum total of genes occurring in a sexually reproducing population in a geographical area at given time is called gene pool okay now the question arises what is this gene frequency yes not down the frequency of any given the frequency of any given gene in a population relative to all its alleles remains in a same locus okay so that means the, what is the gene frequency the frequency of any given gene in a population relative to all its allele remains in the same locus 
that is called gene frequency and as i said the gene flow is mainly brought about by migration and the hybridization okay the change in gene frequency depends on the rate of gene flow the rate of gene flow could be hindered by certain factors like isolation such as huge mountain ranges forest seas etc okay so this is about the so gene migration how oh, exactly okay so we can identify the gene pool the gene frequency okay with respect to the the factors are you able to understand yes the next one is so the genetic drift or the seawall right effect the the second one okay the factors which is affecting the hardy in the principle are the equilibrium the second factor is nothing but the genetic drift it is also called the seawall right effect or popularly known as founder effect okay see here you can identify the gene flow by chance causing change in frequency sometimes the change in frequency is so different in a new sample of population so that they become a different species okay then the original drifted population becomes founders and the effect is called founder effect so what is the meaning of this one okay so let me to explain please note down as i said the first of all the genetic drift how can i define the genetic drift it is a random changes in a gene frequency in a small population purely as chance is called genetic drift i will repeat once again how can i define the genetic drift it is a random changes in a gene frequency in a small population purely as chance is called genetic drift okay and it is an evolutionary mechanism observed in small populations was first described by c wall right okay c wall right in 1931 hence it is called c wall right effect also okay so this is very important you should not down so because in competitive they will ask okay then the change in allele frequency is so different in the new population that they become a different species hence the original drifted population becomes the founders for new species and the effect is called founder effect okay so please uh, note down and remember this one so how can they will ask the how to find the founder effect means you should write this definition the change in allele frequency is so different in the new population that they become a different species hence the original drifted population becomes founders for new species and the effect is called founders effect okay fine the next one the next factor which is affecting the hardy winber equilibrium that is nothing but the very important one mutation i told you from the beginning only the mutations are the spontaneous and permanent change in the genetic makeup of an individual okay so you can also say the mutation is nothing but sudden heritable changes okay how it will be happens so let me to explain okay once again please note on first of all what is a mutation the mutations are the spontaneous and permanent change in the genetic makeup of an individual or we can also say the sudden heritable changes okay so let me to explain so by taking example what the darwin given though darwin believed the evolution takes place due to slow and gradual change but hugo de vries is working on aynothera lamarckiana okay hugo de vries is working on aynothera lamarckiana so believed that a large spontaneous changes called mutations brought in the speciation and it's called saltation okay so and it's called saltation so what is a saltation a single step mutation this is a single step 
mutation leads, leads to large variations is called saltation okay and when it comes to the speciation you know it is a process of formation of new species the speciation is nothing but the process of formation of new species during this process the organism with favorable variations are allowed to reproduce by nature as a foster rate than the others and more and better adopted individuals so here this is very important how they will survive the more and better adopted individuals are formed in every generation in other words better adopted genes spread more quickly than the other genes in the population okay and due to the cumulative effect of this process new structures are formed which in turn leads to the formation of new species okay so that's what i said the darwin believed to be evolution takes place due to the slow and gradual changes but who got ever is working on the anthera anthera lamarckiana believed that the large spontaneous changes called mutation broad in speciation and it's called saltation okay okay then and this change may produce an alternation in the character so there are two types of the mutations namely while we are discussing about the earlier also i told you the gene mutation gene mutation is also called point mutation and the chromosomal mutation is called frame shift mutation okay and here the point mutation is due to change in the nucleotide sequences of a gene whereas the chromosomal mutation is due to the addition or deletion in the chromosome number so these are all things we were discussed in the earlier okay by taking example of the syndromes like klinefelter syndrome turner syndromes etc let you got it how the mutation okay play important role during the the factors which is affecting the hardeweinberg equilibrium okay yeah the next one is very important one okay very important the factor which affects the hardeweinberg equilibrium that is genetic recombination okay so here is the example so in directly we can say it is a reshuffling of gene combination during cross over resulting in a genetic variation but how it will happens exactly let me to explain see during the uh, sexual reproduction generally what will happens the nucleus during the i mean the fusion of the gametes what will happens okay so that is nothing but the exchange of genes between non sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes during the formation of gametes okay that is exchanges okay from x chromosomes to y and y to x or we can also say from paternal chromosomes to that's a uh, i mean the from paternal to maternal maternal to paternal or from we can also say from mother to uh, father or father to mother okay so that's what i said the exchange of genes between non sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes during the formation of gametes and so the recombination results in offspring that have a, a combination of characteristics different uh, different from the top their parents so that's what we generally call the variation the degree of differences from parents to progeny okay and the recombination can also be induced artificially by genetic engineering techniques okay for the purpose of the positive recombination generally nowadays we are using genetic engineering technique okay to induce as well as to uh, i mean expresses the positive recombinations are you getting so this is how exactly the genetic recombination which is a one of the factor which affects the ordeweinberg principle did you got it yeah and the next one is natural selection okay so when we are discussing about the natural selection first of all we should know the meaning okay so what is a natural selection it is a process of selection of better adopted individuals 
it is a process of selection of better adapted individuals with useful variations with useful variations by the nature or individuals less adapted to the environment are eliminated and selecting those better adapted by the nature okay so let me let me explain one second how can i define the natural selection it is a process of selection of better adapted individuals with useful variations by the nature or in another words individuals less adapted to the environment are eliminated and selecting those better adapted by the nature okay and you know very well that so the fittest are the better adapted individuals survive are produce and contribute their genes to the next generations whereas less adapted individuals fail to reproduce or that is nothing but reproduce at very slow rate and their gene are eventually lost so this is called differential reproduction also okay and the very important one there is the natural selection is a process of differential reproduction that leads to differential contribution of the genotype to the gene pool of the next generation so that it brings about the change in allele frequencies of a population okay so when it comes to the types there are three types of the natural selection that one first case stabilizing selection the second type the directional selection the third one is disruptive selection okay let me to explain one by one the first one is how it will be the stabilizing selection so in this case here the more individuals are acquired mean character value and the variation is reduced okay in the represent diagrammatic representation you can identify the consider an x and y axis the number of individuals with phenotype okay the phenotypes if they are favored by the natural selection the medium sized individuals are favored okay so that the peak gets higher and narrower so this can be considered as a stabilizing selection are you getting so that means in the stabilizing selection type here more individuals are acquired mean character value and the variation is reduced okay the second one is the directional selection okay so observe the graph clearly see in this case i mean the here individuals of one extreme that is a value other than the mean character value are more favored okay so that means the phenotypes favored by the natural selections the medium sized individuals are favored the peak shifts in the one direction the peak shifts into the one direction that means here the individuals of one extreme that is a value other than the main character value are more favored so this type of the selection is known as directional selection okay and the third one is the disruptive selection disruptive so here the individuals of the both extremes so that means that there are two species which is present here the individuals that means the two individuals the individuals of both extremes there is a peripheral characters value are both ends of the distribution curve are more favored so that means equally okay so there are two individuals of the both extremes a peri i mean the peripheral characters value at both ends of the dis that is a distribution curve are more favored so this step of the selection is known as the disruptive selection okay so this is how exactly so if you take a example with respect to the body size okay stabilizing selection the peak gets higher and the narrower and so in case of the b directional selection the peak shifts in one direction okay in a directional selection with respect to c what happens so there are two peak forms isn't it so this is how exactly by taking a, a body size we can also explain by the natural selection and another example we can if we take example of the fur color of the rat okay in a original population how it will be the stabilizing selection means the original population 
with respect to evolved population the directional selection so uh, that means in the, during the stabilization selection only one particular species is evolved okay but what about the dis directional selection more than one okay here only they have given there are three species but in case of the disruptive there are two species equally okay so equally they compete for each and everything so that means so during the natural selection what happens it is a process of selection for better adopted individuals with useful variations by the nature okay so that means individuals less adopted to the environment are eliminated and selecting those better adopted by the nature okay so that's what i said the fittest or better adopted individuals survive reproduce and contribute their genes to the next generation okay so this is how the i mean the they try to explain okay or even their principle by giving the appropriate examples okay so these are all about the uh, factors affecting or even the equilibrium are the principles so let it be next class we will continue with respect to the further important topic okay thank you have a nice day